Hi, my name is Mark. If you play guitar, you've probably had times when you've struggled with a solo or some kind of a lick. And after analyzing your struggles, you come to the conclusion that the problem is in your picking hand, your picking technique. It's not like that's the thing, nor the only thing that's stopping your progress, but for this video I'm supposing it is. Mainly because that's the theme of the video. And because I found that people find picking techniques harder than fingering techniques like legato. To be completely honest, I think it's mainly because you practice one more and better than the other. First of all, I'd like to say that the best picking technique or the perfect picking technique doesn't exist. What exists is the best picking technique for you. The, best, the, best. the one that feels more natural to you and doesn't require you to force as much into it. And that will vary depending on many factors. How do you hold your pick? How's its inclination? For how much time have you been using this technique? I'll be breaking down how I pick. It may or may not be suitable for you. And I highly suggest you go and check out Troy Gradis' Cracking the Code series. You can find clips of it on Troy's channel here on YouTube and the full version on his website. To be completely honest, I think it's totally worth the money and I've been a big fan for years. He breaks down tons of techniques from different players that can potentially help you out in your own journey. You may be thinking, why am I watching this guy's video? What can I learn from this guy? What does he even know about picking? His technique is not perfect either. And you're probably right, but since you're watching my video, that means you probably have some things you'd like to work on your picking technique as well. I'm not telling you to do it like me, but there are certainly things that you can learn from me, and there are certainly things I can learn from you as well. If you want to, post a video on YouTube and tag me on it. Everyone asks, economy picking or alternate picking? I use both, kinda. I think you should try both, because they're particularly useful for different things. The same thing applies for hybrid picking, finger picking, and flip picking. Flip picking. Flip picking. Not only are different techniques useful for different things, but different genres require different sounds that are synonymous with those techniques. And again, as always, it's better to know how to do it and not need it, than to need it and not be able to do it. I said I used a bunch of techniques, but I mainly start with alternate picking. In theory, alternate picking is the easiest. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. And that's it. But when you're trying to play really complicated licks, you may notice that it's really hard to do. And for me, pure alternate picking didn't work for anything. Even though there are guys like Steve Morse, John Petrucci and Kiko Loreiro who have these crazy monstrous cross-picking approaches to alternate picking and can play almost everything on face of the earth, you can see when they're playing that they've practiced a lot and that they have done a crazy amount of exercises and practicing to get that kind of chops on. Don't get me wrong, I think you should practice, but I prefer the Guthrie Govan approach to picking technique. He has said a couple of times that he didn't really use to practice picking technique, that the main thing you should do is try and play relaxed. If you play relaxed and try not to overdo it, your body will naturally find the easiest way to do it. But hey, if you've been doing alternate picking for a while and you find it really easy or natural to do, don't change because of me. Try and play what feels natural to you. Use a technique that you find comfortable. Even though there are things that you can normally play using that kind of technique, you can find ways around licks where you still pick the notes that are supposed to be picked and you don't have to do that crazy alternate picking stuff. Myself, I find it extremely awkward to do that, that cross picking thing. Independently of what method I use to practice it, I still found it very hard to do and not comfortable at all. So I found a way around it. Nowadays, I only use that pure alternate picking, cross picking thing if that's the only way I can play something. Let's get started then. This is how I hold my pick. When I started playing guitar, I had already been playing bass for a couple of years. I had messed with holding a pick a couple of times. But I was a fingers only kind of guy. I went online and saw a video on how to hold your pick properly. I don't really remember whose video I saw, but it was a video of a guy saying holding a pick is not that hard. What you gotta do is open your hand like this and then bend your index finger. By the way, my fingers are kind of dirty because of pick dust. After that, you grab your pick. And even though I use these oddly shaped picks, don't worry, this method works with every kind of pick. By the way, these are Dragon Heart guitar picks. They're made of a crazy super resistant material and they really take a while to wear out. I'll leave a link to their website below. So, you grab your pick, you place your pick on this little nudge of your finger, this one right here, and then you clamp it down with your thumb so it doesn't go away. I'm not sure if you can see this properly. And then you're ready to play. You don't need to hold your pick like this, but before I hold it like that, I was holding it like this. <laughs> And I only noticed a couple of improvements after a couple of hours of playing it like this. But I can assure you, holding your pick correctly will help your picking technique dearly. A big factor that kind of determines how you play is pick slanting. Right now, you can see that my hand with my pick, I kind of tilted this way. Some guys play like this. <laughs> their pick tilted this way, but I play with my pick tilted this way. This is what Roy calls pick slanting. He calls this downward pick slanting. Downward pick slanting because your pick is slanted downwards. 
and this one upwards pick slanting. I do downwards pick slanting mainly because of the way I hold my pick. Since I hold it like this, and before I did hybrid picking I used to lay my fingers like this, downward pick slanting feels super natural and comfortable. For that reason, I try to play as much as I can with my pick tilted downwards. Slanting the pick gives you different advantages depending on which way you slant it. When you slant it downwards, every time you play an even number of notes per string, like a pentatonic thing for instance, you go down, up, when you go up, your pick is free in the air up here, and it's completely ready to hit the other string below it. Or the string above it. Independently on what you're playing, if you're playing an even number of notes per string, it works perfectly with straight alternate picking. Down, up, down, up, down, up. Even if you try to do some kind of string skipping, if you have an even number of notes like... Your pick is still free to do it. Down, up. It's free up here, so you can just land on the E string. You can either A sand or D sand. You have no picking problems. Now, when you have an uneven number of notes per string, it's where you can get three. If you're ascending, here's something you can do. If you have one note on each string, like some kind of arpeggio, like... I had two notes on this string, but it's the same concept. You can just sweep it. If you have an uneven number of notes per string and more than one note, for instance three notes, and the guitar players really like three note per string stuff, for instance if I play you a natural minor scale, this is how I would approach it. I would do economy picking. I can't really do alternate picking if I have three notes per string because I do down, up, down, and then I don't know if you can see it properly, but after I do down, up, down, my pick is stuck between the A string and the D string. I can't really do down, up, down, and then do an upstroke on the D string because my pick is stuck between those strings. I'd have to string hop. And that doesn't really feel natural, especially at high speeds. So I economy pick, I go down, up, down. And since my pick is between those strings, I can just do a down stroke, a rest stroke, like the gypsy jazz guys call it. I have one note per string kind of stuff. And that kind of pretty much sums it. When I'm trying to descend and I have an uneven number of notes per string, if I have one note on each string and I have consecutive strings, I do the same thing I do ascending, I sweep. And sweep picking is another of those techniques like alternate picking that sounds nice and easy to do in theory, but it's harder to do than it looks. When I learned what sweep picking was about, I immediately tried to do it and I was like, okay. Yeah, too, it's like and that sounds easier than done. Even though it didn't really feel that natural, it felt way more natural than straight alternate picking. Like those crazy last prisoner pages where John Petrucci does alternate picking on all of those arpeggios like <laughs> That's just too much work for me, they have a different sound, but it's not enough of a difference to make me try and do it. The bigger problem for me came when I tried to descend with an uneven number of notes per string. For instance, if I tried to go down like... I tried to do an upwards pick slant and do economy picking, the same way I do with ascending, like... Slow, it doesn't feel that awkward, but trying to do it really fast, since I'm naturally a downwards pick slanting kind of guy, trying to shift to upwards pick slanting for those kinds of licks didn't really feel natural. In these kinds of licks, I actually do alternate picking, but I do it because it's really quick. For instance, if I do down, up, down, I tilt my hand like this in the last note so that I can do 
Even though straight alternate picking feels awkward ascending, descending, it kinda feels like I'm doing downwards pick slanting with an extra jump, for as weird as that may sound. I don't know why I do it, I just know that when I started to look into my picking technique, this is what I was doing. We've covered most licks, except the odd ones. So I don't really like to hammer on notes when I can pick them. For instance, many people use this shape for the E minor arpeggio. And I don't really do a hammer on here. I pick them. Since this is the starting note, I do a downstroke. Then for the next note, that G, I do an upstroke. And my pick is free up here, so I can do the sweep anyways. The same thing in the little string. The same thing goes if you try to do, for instance, a minor 7th arpeggio. In that same position, you pick your regular E minor shape. Then you add the 7th. I don't really hammer it on. The same thing as going to the 1, to the 3, to the 5. For instance, the 5's pattern from Eric Johnson is a fine example. The same thing for these little arpeggios. For instance, if you have this little, like, Ingve diminished arpeggio. Everybody does the... One thing I like to do is to add another note on the G string, like... And it works with my picking as well. I do the sweep, and then I tilt it back. Another oddball that really made me work on my alternate picking is when you have an arpeggio like B minor arpeggio and then you descend but you skip a note like Marty Friedman does this in the Lucretia solo. At that time I wasn't really doing hybrid picking. If I were I'd probably practice it with like the same thing ascending. These kind of oddball one note per string licks you can only really do with alternate picking. If you have those pedal point licks like if I have to pick it, I do alternate picking as well. But if I can choose it, I'll do hybrid picking. So yeah, I guess that's pretty much what I do. But hey, just because I'm doing a video about picking technique doesn't mean I pick every note all the time. I really like the sound of pick notes. Sometimes a little drill here and there like so if I had to sum my pick technique down, I would say if you have an even number of notes per string, just keep your pick slanted down and do alternate picking. Like. If you have an uneven number of notes per string, if you can sweep one of them. If you're descending and you have an uneven number of notes per string, just do it alternate picking and tilt it as less as you can. And to finish on my picking technique, a couple of things I do quite oftenly is mess arpeggios and scales up so that they fit my picking technique. For instance, this mini minor arpeggio. I usually add the 7th on the G string, like... Even though I can do the... It's much more comfortable for me to add that 7th note and then repeat the pattern, like... The same thing with major arpeggios, I usually add the 6th, we have this little major arpeggio, I usually add the 6th. That 
kind of sums it up. Thank you for watching. I want to announce that I'm giving away free Skype lessons. If you'd like to win one free Skype lesson and discounts on future lessons, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, follow on Instagram, like me on Facebook, and then DM me on one of those social medias with screenshots proving that you've subscribed, liked, followed, all that kind of stuff. I'll leave a link below. I'm trying to upload more regularly, so please comment on what kind of videos I should make and what I can improve on. I'll see you next time. Cheers. Thank you.